Hello, I'm Emma Barker, Senior Lecturer in Art History at The Open University. Now that winter's here, I've started thinking about how it's been represented in art. The paradox is that the harshest season of the year has produced some particularly spectacular images, none more so than the 16th century Netherlandish painter Peter Bruegel's Hunters in the Snow, which shows three men trudging home after a hunting trip. Their hunched poses and the drooping heads of their dogs show how cold and tired they are. They are not the focus of the scene, however, but rather serve to lead our eye into the picture, over the frozen landscape to the snowy peaks in the distance, which add a note of fantasy, given how flat the Netherlands really are. This beautiful but chilly spectacle is designed to be enjoyed by someone safely indoors by the fire, someone like the wealthy merchant who commissioned the picture from Bruegel as part of a series of seasons of the year. You can see how important it was to have a fire in winter from an image of the month of February from a 15th century book of hours, which uses a cutaway technique to show us both the figures warming themselves indoors and those working in the cold outside. Increasingly, however, winter landscapes were depicted as places not of work, but of enjoyment. The skaters who appear in the background of Bruegel's painting move centre stage in the work of the 17th century Dutch painter Hendrik Overkamp, who made a speciality of winter landscapes, particularly skating scenes. You have to remember that the period from about 1550 to 1800 was what is known as the Little Ice Age, when it got so cold in winter that rivers regularly froze over. It wasn't just landscape painters who evoked winter in their art, however. Figure painters usually personified it as an old man, but when the 18th century French artist François Boucher was commissioned to paint a series of pictures of the Four Seasons, he chose to depict winter as a pretty young woman riding in a sleigh pushed by a young man wearing a big fur hat, Cossack style, suggesting that the whole scene is a kind of Russian fantasy. It's hardly surprising, of course, that winter should be associated with the far north. Many of the most striking images of this season are by artists from Northern Europe, like the early 19th century German artist Caspar David Friedrich. His snowy winter landscape features evergreen trees and a Gothic church spire, so that the whole scene becomes symbolic of the North. Later, the Russian artist Ivan Shishkin made the symbolism of the winter landscape explicit and his painting in the wild north. By contrast, the later 19th century French painter Claude Monet depicts winter as a purely visual spectacle. For him, the snowy landscape is an opportunity to explore shifting effects of light and colour, as you can see from his painting The Magpie, where he depicts snow in shadow as blue. It's a very different way of painting winter from Bruegel's stark black against white though the motif of the dark bird against white snow recalls the work of earlier artists. Today, we can enjoy snowy weather all the more readily, thanks to the invention of central heating. But of course, harsh winters are now few and far between. In an age of global warming, the snowy winter landscape is likely to become ever more remote and unfamiliar, something that we can best enjoy through looking at works of art from the past.